Welcome to the first module of the Carbohydrate Chemistry Stream of Resources. In this introductory module, we hope to point out a few essential things to know about sugar molecules. In particular, we will look at the general structure and conformations of carbohydrates, the anomeric effect, how to draw sugar molecules, and finally, the structures and names of some of the most common sugars found in nature. Let's start with a definition. Carbohydrates are compounds that contain a carbonyl in the form of an aldehyde or ketone and multiple hydroxyl groups. The general formula of a carbohydrate is shown here, and you may notice that it will have one degree of unsaturation due to the carbonyl. Sugar molecules are more frequently found as rings as opposed to open chains, and in solution the linear molecules exist in an equilibrium with six-membered ring forms called pyranoses and five-membered ring forms called furanoses. The exact ratios of pyranose, furanose, and open chain forms vary according to the sugar and the solvent that it's in, but the six-membered pyranose rings are almost always preferred. If you think back to introductory organic chemistry, you'll notice that they can adopt a chair conformation. Turn your attention now to the hydroxyl group on carbon-1 in the pyranose forms, and you'll notice that it can be oriented either axially or equatorially. These different forms are called anomers. We'll discuss how to, to assign them as alpha or beta in a few minutes. Sugars convert between their various forms through a process called mutarotation. Let's look at a few key mechanistic steps. First, the ring oxygen is protonated, which is followed by ring opening and the formation of a carbonyl. In this open chain form of the sugar, the carbonyl can rotate to allow for nucleophilic attack on its other face. Following a deprotonation step, we now have a different anomer of our original molecule. In this mechanism, it is the C5 hydroxyl group that is the nucleophile. If the C4 hydroxyl acts as the nucleophile instead, a five-membered furanose ring would form. You should become comfortable drawing sugars in either their open chain or ring forms, and so we will quickly go over a few presentation guidelines for the ring forms using the galactose molecule in the Fischer projection in the lower left corner as an example. For pyranoses, begin with one of the following two templates, depending on whether your sugar is D or L. Notice that each bond is parallel to another bond across the ring. Next, add in the bonds to the hydroxyl groups, as well as the C6 hydroxymethyl. Axial bonds should be straight up and down, while equatorial bonds are parallel to two other bonds within the ring. You can now add in the hydroxyl groups themselves, being sure to use a relatively large font. The text on the left-hand side of the molecule should flow to the left, while text on the right-hand side should flow right. It is not necessary to show the hydrogens, unless you have a specific reason to draw attention to them. To check that your hydroxyl groups are in the right place, pretend that you are walking along the carbon chain starting from C6. When you get to each carbon, always walk between the hydrogen and the oxygen. Hydroxyl groups on the right in the line drawing should also be on the right in the Fischer projection. Also notice that hydroxyl groups on the right-hand side of the Fischer projection end up being oriented downwards in the ring. Furano sugars can be shown using Hayworth projections. Glycosides are formed by attaching a molecule to carbon-1 through another atom, most often oxygen. This linkage can be in either an axial or an equatorial position, and to specify the type of linkage, we need to compare carbon-1 with the chiral center furthest away from it. If the oxygen is on the same side at both C1 and the furthest chiral carbon, then the configuration is alpha. If the oxygens are on different sides, the configuration is beta. We'll now move on to discussing some electronic effects that influence the conformations of carbohydrates, beginning with the endoanomeric effect. Electronegative substituents on carbon-1, or the anomeric carbon, prefer to be oriented axially, 
as opposed to the equatorial orientation that one would expect based on sterics. This observation can be explained in two ways. First, an axial anomeric substituent allows for one of the lone pairs on the ring oxygen to donate into the antibonding orbital of the C1O1 bond. This rationale is supported by a shorter C1 ring oxygen bond, a longer C1O1 bond, and a ring oxygen with more sp2 character. A second explanation is that dipole-dipole repulsion is reduced in sugars with axially oriented electronegative substituents. Consistent with this rationale, the anomeric effect is reduced in polar solvents, such as water. There is also a second type of anomeric effect, known as the exo-anomeric effect, that influences the conformations of glycosides. The exo-anomeric effect arises from the donation of a glycosidic oxygen lone pair into the CO antibonding orbital formed by the ring oxygen and carbon-1. This backbonding influences the conformations of both axial glycosides and equatorial glycosides. Let's now look at a few of the most common sugars that you are likely to encounter. The most common sugar on Earth is glucose, which is the building block of starch, cellulose, and glycogen. In its ring form, beta-D-glucose has all of its hydroxyl groups in equatorial positions. Mannose is the C2 epimer of glucose and has an axial hydroxyl at carbon-2 in its pyranose form, while galactose is the C4 epimer of glucose with an axial hydroxyl group at carbon-4. Nature sometimes modifies sugars by exchanging the hydroxyl group on carbon-2 with an N-acetamido group. Carrying out this change on glucose, for instance, gives us N-acetylglucosamine, or glucnac for short. Similar substitutions on mannose and galactose give us N-acetylmannosamine and N-acetylgalactosamine, respectively. Although most sugars exist in the D configuration, L-fucose is an example of a sugar that naturally exists in the L configuration. The sugars we've looked at so far have all been hexoses, which means they have six carbons. Five carbon sugars, called pentoses, are also frequently found in nature. One of the most common is D-xylose. Sugars can also have more than six carbons. The sialic acid family of sugars has a nine carbon backbone. Two prominent members of this group are N-acetylneuraminic acid, which is often simply called sialic acid, and 2-keto-3-deoxynonic acid, or KDN for short. This concludes our brief introduction to carbohydrate chemistry. We've looked at the general structure of carbohydrates and how to draw them, as well as examining mutarotation and the anomeric effect. Further, you are now able to identify some of the most common sugars found in nature. We hope that you will continue to build upon this foundation of knowledge by exploring some of the other resources found on this page.